Hello everybody, I am Elham from Skin Chakra, the place to purchase excellent quality cosmetic raw material and to learn how to formulate like a cosmetic chemist. And today we are going to show you a kiss emulsion with this nice and smooth texture with a palm free emulsifier that we have in our shop for a couple of years now. Look how nice it is. This is an anionic emulsifier and there are a few uh, factors that you need to consider when working with an anionic emulsifier generally, specifically with this emulsifier which is glycerin stearate citrate. When you are working with an anionic emulsifier or even a cationic emulsifier, the risk of creaming and emulsion stabilization is reduced because uh, ionically charged particles inherently don't come too close to each other to coalesce and they repel each other so the emulsion particles do not get too close and uh, the emulsions are usually more stable than emulsifiers uh, that are non-ionic. But when you are working with an ionic emulsifier, you have a kind of confinement to that certain ion. For example, when you are working with an anionic emulsifier, you cannot use a cationic gum or cationic uh, co-emulsifier or cationic uh, preservative. All of your ingredients must remain non-ionic or uh, anionic. With this certain emulsifier, uh, the pH will drop over time and you need to buffer the formulation to avoid a pH drift. And uh, we do that by adding simply 0.5% of sodium citrate, which is a, a white powder, crystalline powder, uh, easily water soluble to the uh, water phase before we blend uh, the water and the oil phase. Keeping these few uh, factors in mind, you can easily prepare a broad range of uh, stable and nice uh, emulsions. Uh, today, we are going to show you just to prepare one of these four emulsions but to show you how we can adjust the viscosity by just changing the gum we prepared four emulsions. This emulsifier basically creates a low viscosity to medium uh, viscosity emulsions. It is not soapy and not sticky at all and uh, by uh, varying the gum combination you can slightly change the viscosity of the emulsion. We are going to show you just one of these emulsions but we have prepared four emulsions for you and you can compare the viscosities visually and I will upload uh, the viscosity chart so that, that you can uh, really see how the viscosity changes by just varying the gum. This one is our Solagum AX alone. This one is a blend of Solagum AX and uh, Taragum. This one is a blend of Solagum AX and Diamigum. And this one with the highest viscosity and a gel-like texture is a blend of Solagum AX and Konjac Gum that uh, you know probably that the Xanthan Gum that is present in the Solagum AX uh, makes a gel with the concha gum and that is a gel-like texture and is a very nice texture. We will show you how to make this one which is a blend of uh, the uh, solar gum AX and taro gum but the principle is the same for all of them. Uh, blending the oil and uh, water faces separately, dispersing the gum, uh, heating both faces because this is a hot process emulsifier, and then homogenizing the oil face in the water face, uh, cooling down and adding your 
uh, heat sensitive ingredients. So if you are interested to work with an uh, anionic emulsifier with improved stability over non-ionic emulsifiers, follow this tutorial. This is a very key formulation that we start with and during the coming weeks we are going to boost this formulation by varying some um, parameters. Blend the ingredients of phase A together and then disperse the gum in the water phase and hydrate it for about 20 minutes. The gum is fully hydrated now and now we will put the oil and water phase in the water bath and heat both of them. The temperature is 84, 83. The temperature between 82 to 85 is okay. And we will heat both phases till they reach the temperature and the oil phase is completely melted. Both water and oil phase have reached the temperature now and the oil phase is completely melted. And now we remove them from the bath and homogenize the oil phase in the water phase. The emulsion is made now. You see how nice and smooth it is. And we'll start stirring and the cool down so that we can add our cool down phase later. The emulsion has been stirring now and it's cooled uh, to under 50 degrees and we can add the cool down phase which consists of pantenol and sodium PCA. We let it stir and cool down further to under 30 degrees so that we can add the preservative and the essential oil. Our emulsion has reached under 30 degrees and it's time to add the preservative and the essential oil. The preservative system that we are using is independent of the pH and we can actually add the preservative directly to the emulsion now, but just to make sure that we are not completely out of range, we will uh, prepare a 10% dilution and measure the pH. Our pH meter is calibrated. So the pH is 639, which is slightly higher than our range. We will add the preservative, the essential oil, and then we will reduce the pH by adding lactic acid. We'll now add lactic acid to the emulsion to reduce the pH. Since we have cheated earlier and prepared this emulsion several times, we know how much we need to add when you are making the formulation for the first time. You have to go slowly and add the lactic acid gradually, not that you jump on the other side of the pH scale. So we can now add the essential oil, the preservative, and then prepare another 10% dilution and remeasure the pH. Lana prepares another 10% dilution and we'll check the pH once more. We will measure the pH now for the second time after adding the lactic acid, the preservative system and the essential oil and hopefully it is in range. The preservative system is independent of the pH 
and we aim for a pH between 4.9 to 5.3. Yoo-hoo! That's it! Perfect! 5.28